Hello Argyle cellos. Hope you're keeping well. This is my second instalment of the Janacek Suite number no. one. And um, somewhat of a discovery was that there is only one extra page to the first movement. So today we're doing the second page. And um, I hope that some of you might be able to make the sectional that we're hoping to hold on Thursday. I'm going to look at numbers. It might be that we just do a whole Argyle quick rehearsal or if we do it in sections. So um, once again, I hope this is of some help. Forgive me if I get clefts wrong because it's quite confusing trying to play it on the violin. Um, and then sometimes I read it as alto clef because I'm transposing from bass. So forgive me. Um, and I know a number of you wanted to know how in bar on the first page, the key problem really, I think, is the tuning of the last few phrases from bar 27 onwards and um, not being not a cellist um, I would love to give you fabulous fingering and I'm afraid I can't do that my advice would be you've got time to find the first note and once you've found the first note just be really sure of the intervals whether they're tones and semitones um, and I think I've got a link on my website on where you find this clip to an orchestra playing this piece and you, they actually hone on the, on the cellos and you can see the fingering and it doesn't make an awful lot of sense for me but it might well help you so that's my advice for you but number one get up to that note I know when I'm finding a note that's high on the violin I ladder my way up so if it's an F I would be seeing the, finding the fifth below and then finding that top F so um, however is easiest for you to find that top D and then just watch out that you then catch the B flat and coming down um, and it's just getting those intervals. But I think that really once you've found that top note, um, I think then it should be a lot easier. So I would practice finding that first note as fast as you can really and as secured as you can. And then it's not being too kind of with your arm and just float to your arm and try and make a beautiful sound. It doesn't have to be loud there, just really so it's supposed to sound beautiful, not oh god this is high <laughs> um, so I hope that helps in some small way and maybe John might give you some better fingering um, I don't want to even go there because I'm just out of my depth so the second page starts with pizzicato it's you and the bass and um, it's a completely new theme it's quite fun and playful and over the top you've got the violas and the seconds have got a lovely kind of chorale theme but you're sort of joking around underneath it's quite fun so I would suggest not too quiet um, so forgive the notes at the end I can't transpose at speed it's really hard um, so I think have fun with it it's quite jokey and um, then when you've got the dynamics with the pizzicato, make sure you really have fun with that. And if you listen to the recording again, you'll hear that they really use the phrasing. So you go da 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 and you come away. And then the second time even more. So you're really arching. So don't just play a load of pizzicato thinking, okay, this is a load of notes. Make it into a tune. Um, bar 47, you've got this little dotted f uh, f figure. What I would suggest is less bow, little bow, really little bows, very springy fingers and just, um, I would do the down, down, up, up, I think that works because in the moment, 49 for example, that works really nicely um, and I'm then just, you need to get, so I would practice all going, across the strings or just do that rhythm till you're really feeling happy with that and then it's all about tuning again so you really get a you really know where you're going with each of those octaves and then you know what I'm going to say is pay attention to the dynamic markings so that uh, because you start off piano suddenly you're loud at bar 50 and then you come away 54, you come right away to the piano, but you've got accent still, crescendo, uh, and then come away, crescendo, come away. Um, so have fun, don't just play like a load of dotted rhythms and all oh, this is kind of repetitive. Make something of it. Um, and it's quite, it's, it really goes with the whole music on the, uh, that's going on over the top. So drive with that. 
and then um, we have 63 to play and demonstrate a little bit more before speaking so that's what I've just done for you I hope that's helpful and uh, so I think 64 you've got a lovely little bulge up enjoy that little bit there um, I'll give you the bone so I know you're upside down but I think it works out um, it's a little bit of tune so push it through and then you can come away you noticed in bar I hope in bath 66 that I really slowed down and I've put big arrows and um, looking glasses because then you the karma is a, a, a more gentle tempo so I would prepare for that the bar before really watch and be prepared to really pull up and then um, you've got little bulges but really in bar 67 65 67 89 69 pianissimo you know what I say about dynamics and the really quiet so here you can be really floaty don't use little bow and go disappear this isn't going to project it's not very interesting so you use a bit more bow than maybe you think float it a little bit more but all the weight out of your arm and just and you can do the bulge and then 71 your triple p and so that's really really soft 72 I think we pick up the Cerrando there, I think. You're already hinting, so bring out that little accent. You're hinting that actually now we're heading towards the end. This is the ends inside. <laughs> and really head, head, head to your quavers, repeated quavers. So it's That's really triumphant. You can just, I would love to see the cellos really letting rip at that point because it's nice and easy, I hope. And um, I would like a lovely lot of sound there. Now at 79.80, this is the return of the beginning theme. It's only in the violas and the cellos. So you've got to really pound it out because it's as though we're starting again. This time you're fortissimo though. So really go for it. I would almost chop the last quaver and then go straight into this really big sound. So you're really going and you're getting those retakes again and you're really going for the energy and the power. And then the second utterance in 82, I would still keep that fairly beefy. Dying away and then you lose the power. And now we're actually we're signaling we're not going to play the whole thing again thank goodness um don't worry folks it's over and then you've got this beautiful end um where you just i think just fade up into nothing you can almost hardly play the last note which might be quite nice for you because it's pretty damn high again i think it's the highest highest note ever um again maybe john has some helpful hints how to get up there so excuse the different octaves 
and uh, so I would when I if you're finding those up there again I would really slow your hand and find your way up there um, again if you look on the YouTube clip that um, of the orchestra playing it they close they zoom into the cellos here and you'll be able to see what fingering they're using um, it looks like a thumb position which I don't really understand I'm afraid have a look and see if that's helpful John might better help or even I might get Linda to send you some fingering if it's really bad but I think um, the key is just to be really relaxed, really airy bow because if you think about it the bow is not really doing anything difficult. It's all in the left hand and what happens is the bow gets all tight because the poor left hand's doing all this flying up the fingerboard up here and then we get tight here and actually if you just try and really delicate soft here it helps soften here and then we lose the panic hopefully. So I hope that's been a little helpful. I think it's a cracking little piece. It says a lot in a very short little movement. Um, but I think we need to capture, <coughs> excuse me, we need to capture the drama, the intensity, the excitement, and then a real contrast with that pizzicato. So you can enjoy yourselves there. And I think it's a great piece to get stuck into. Um, so I hope to see some of you on Thursday. And I hope this has been at least a little bit helpful. And um, I only wish I could play the cello. <laughs> Bye.